I'm Bob Cusack, Editor-in-Chief of The Hill. Thank you for joining us for our Newsmaker event. On the record with Congressman Sam Graves, the chairman of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. We are here to check in with him on his priorities for the committee and on the implementation of President Biden's $1.2 trillion Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which is aimed at improving roads, bridges, airports, ports, and waterways. You can tweet us at, at the Hill events using the hashtag, hashtag the Hill Newsmakers. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Oh, I, I can't hear you. You might be muted. Uh, doesn't look like it. Okay, now I can hear you. Okay, great. So, Mr. Chairman, tell me about, you got the, you got the gavel, as Speaker Kevin McCarthy says, uh, there are no small gavels, no big gavels, they're all the right size. What are you going to do with that gavel? What's your agenda for the transportation panel? Well, we've got a lot of uh, reauthorizations to do, and we're we're going to be a work committee. We're not a uh, we're not a show committee. Um, we've got a lot of work to do. We got FA reauthorization. We've got pipeline safety reauthorization, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard reauthorization, the WERDA or the Water Resources um, Bill reauthorization. So we've got a lot of work to do, and then we're going to have a lot of oversight too on the President's Infrastructure Bill as it goes as that money goes out. We want to make sure that um, the waste and abuse. Um, are at a minimum, and uh, we also want to make sure that, that bureaucrats don't rewrite the law through rulemaking authority. So. Mm -hmm. Now, you did not vote for the bill. Uh, why didn't you support that legislation? I think it was 13 House Republicans did more in the Senate, did support it. Um, the biggest reason is because there's no pay-fors in it. Um, it's all borrowed money. You've got $1.2 trillion worth of spending that uh, that is going out. The basis for the bill was the surface transportation uh, reauthorization, um, which was, I think, our figure when we started the process was about $500 billion. I think the Democrats were coming in somewhere around $600 billion, which would have been the most we had ever spent on a surface transportation bill. And what happened was it was Republicans were cut out of the process. The process became so partisan that once they passed the bill out of the House, it went absolutely nowhere in the Senate. So when the Senate bill came back over, um, there was no House input uh, whatsoever. There was no pay-fors in it. So that's the main reason why I couldn't support it uh, when uh, when it was voted on. Um, it's now the law of the land. So um, we are responsible for implementing it. And we're going to make sure that uh, it's implemented uh, the way the, the uh, bill was intended, the law was intended. Well, Mr. Chairman, as you know, the nation's infrastructure needs are significant. Have you gotten the sense that the Biden administration, are they in the implementation of this of this transportation now law, which is going to take years, are they being fair? Are, are they being equitable to uh, Republicans who did not vote for it? Because obviously everyone in every district has transportation needs. Well, it's hard to tell at this point because uh, such a small amount of the money has actually um, gone out. Um, but that is one of the things that we're going to be watching uh, in oversight and, and making sure that it is fairly uh, distributed throughout the country and, and uh, it isn't focused on, uh, you know, one district over another. We also want to make sure that it goes to traditional uh, infrastructure, not Green New Deal priorities or, or, or things that don't do anything to, for instance, uh, fix the supply chain or make, uh, as another, for instance, make our ports more efficient. Um, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, that, that this is going to make uh, make sure that happens and not just green, you know, green new deals, green priorities. Sure. And and do you want to pull back some of those provisions? Uh, you know, some Republicans have said we, we need to cut the budget. We need to cut woke priorities. Uh, would that be some of the provisions in the transportation law? Well, that's something that we're obviously looking at. And again, this is all borrowed money. Um, there is absolutely no pay fors uh, in this uh, in this bill. And that's what's unfortunate um, is that they completely departed from, uh, you know, what we've always done in the past was surface transportation reauthorization, and that is depending on the uh, highway trust fund, which is paid for by our, our fuel tax dollars. And uh, they departed from that, so they're borrowing money from general revenue and uh, to pay for these things. And so um, there may need to be some pairing back and, and restructuring those priorities, making sure that they are going to traditional infrastructure. And, and again, one of the problems is that inflation is so out of control. In fact, in the construction uh, world, we're seeing somewhere in the neighborhood of 25, 26% inflation. 
um, which means the money is going to go, uh, it, it going to do even less. It's going to go uh, not as far as as what was originally intended when it comes to that traditional infrastructure. So um, we want to be very careful with the spending and, and make sure it is going to, uh, you know, to to make our system more efficient. Uh, as you know, Congressman, the FAA had a basically a system meltdown in in January. Uh-huh. You're a pilot. Uh, are you satisfied with the with the fixes that have happened? And are you confident that this kind of meltdown is not going to happen again? Well, I, I'm not necessarily confident of that. It's a classic um, government-run uh, software system, um, which if you've ever tried to navigate any of the government systems, they are extraordinarily um, not user-friendly uh, in many cases. But they are, they've been in the process of overhauling that system for some time now, and, and they say it's going to take several years to, to get that um, done overall. Very frustrating from the standpoint of, uh, you know, needing that sooner rather than uh, rather than later. Um, but this seems to be classic FAA. It's just taking them forever to to get things done, to get uh, answers to to stakeholders out there, to people that uh, that need help with the FAA. Um, it's just taking them a long time to implement anything that Congress has asked them to do. Uh, so that makes it that much harder. So. Um, I would like to see them get it done much, much quicker. Um, you know, we don't need any more system failures uh, like we had, which and it was a colossal failure. Um, but, uh, you know, they need to get it done. They need to get it done quicker. Well, uh, will you tackle this in the FAA reauthorization process? And what's the timeline for that? So the timeline on FAA reauthorization in the House, we would like to have a bill out of the House by July 1st. Um, we've finished taking uh, recommendations and and talking to the stakeholders, getting their ideas and, and uh, thoughts in. Um, we're going to have a hearing on it in June. We would like to see it on the House floor uh, again by the very first part of, uh, of July and out and over to the Senate. Uh, the Senate timeline, uh, Senator Cantwell has... Uh, stated that they want to have their first their hearing in April. It, it's hard to tell if they can make that deadline, but that's great. Uh, if they can, we have to have this thing done by September 30th. So um, it's it, it's a fairly aggressive timeline, but I think we can get it done if we uh, obviously if we work together. Uh, can you work together? Do you think this will be a, a bipartisan bill, especially with, you know, a number, uh, I, I've talked to a number of members who say climate change is creeping into a lot of le- uh, legislation, or at least debates on it, that's going to affect the, the farm bill. Do you think you can get a bipartisan bill done? I think we can, um, absolutely. And and uh, Rick Larson, who is my counterpart on the Democrat side, he and I are committed to making sure that the committee um, is is uh, goes back to our bipartisan uh, tradition, and and uh, we will have debates on that. We won't agree on everything, and and uh, the will of the committee uh, will make the determination on moving, uh, then moving the legislation forward. But I see no reason why we can't have a good bipartisan bill. And, you know, Rick and I get along very well together, and uh, I see him as a partner in this, and and so um, I'm looking forward to it. What about uh, communication from the Biden administration? Uh, I mentioned, you know, been talking to some members about, you know, when when Republicans were in the minority, they sent a lot of letters to, to the White House and and relevant agencies didn't get a lot of responses, or at least if they did, they weren't timely or substantive. Has that changed now that House Republicans uh, have the majority and subpoena power? I wouldn't necessarily say that it has changed substantially, and I wouldn't even necessarily say that it is um, necessarily partisan. Um, Administrations and particularly agencies, bureaucrats within those agencies, um, they, uh, they drag their feet. Many, many times they drag their feet when it comes to getting responses, to when it comes to implementing uh, requests that Congress has made, uh, whether that is getting a report back to us or implementing a p- particular provision or, or uh, whatever the case may be. Um, they're very hard to get to uh, or to, to pin down and, and get answers out of. So, um, you know, that's part of the oversight process that we're going to be going through. And everybody's having that uh, that issue. It isn't just in the world of transportation. Uh, it seems to be, uh, you know, throughout. President Biden, as you know, is a big fan of uh, Amtrak, uh, which has had its uh, troubles, uh, certainly compounded by by COVID. You've been critical of some bonuses at Amtrak. What is the future uh, of, of Amtrak and, and what kind of oversight are you going to do in this Congress? Well, that's a good question. And Amtrak has gotten a pile of money 
uh, and they continue to uh, they continue to struggle uh, to make things work. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is a quasi government uh, organization, and uh, that is part of our oversight. We're obviously going to be paying very close attention to how that money is spent, um, if they even can spend it all. Um, and making sure that they their operations are are more efficient. You know, it's it's very frustrating also from the standpoint that we have private companies out there now willing to bid on these routes, and yet they are bidding against Amtrak, which is a government subsidized um, organization. And Amtrak, in many cases, is losing those bids. Uh, so that's fascinating that a private company can still do it cheaper. Uh, and in many cases better uh, than Amtrak can, yet the taxpayers are uh, are paying that uh, paying that bill. You know, when Amtrak was first um, conceived or, or first uh, created, um, there weren't any private companies that wanted to bid on those routes. So that's the reason for Amtrak. And so um, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting from, from that standpoint, uh, you know, just to see, you know, why they continue to struggle uh, just to, uh, you know, to, to meet their demand or, or do what their uh, you know their their job is or their mission statement uh, mission statement is and and uh, so we're we're going to be doing some Amtrak oversight as well. Uh, House Republicans uh, have unveiled a, a large energy package that you've co-sponsored. Obviously, mm -hmm. energy intertwined with transportation. Uh, do you see that moving? Uh, this spring slash summer, and do you think there could be some type of uh, deal? Because obviously the Senate's probably not going to move that exact bill, but maybe there are provisions on permitting reform that could attract some bipartisanship. Now, we're going to move. We're going to bring the bill up next week on the House floor, and so it's obviously going to uh, uh, move through the House. We do have a small portion of that. Uh, most of it is in the Resources Committee and in the uh, uh, Energy and Commerce Committee, but we do have some uh, permitting, some 401 permitting uh, processes to uh, to go through, and so that makes our committee pertinent um, from that standpoint. But listen, we have to do something to make ourselves uh, energy independent, and the taxpayers are are you know they're the ones feeling it in the wallet. I don't know if if you know you've checked your heating bill lately or your electric bill. You know they're all going up. And it's simply because of the administration's push to eliminate uh, fossil fuels and 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 forcing folks into uh, uh, into alternatives that that you know aren't there yet. The market needs to um, you know we need to let the market work itself out. And and while we are in that process, why not use those uh, those fuels, those energy sources that uh, you know are so cheap, so plentiful. And, uh, and get our heating and, and electric costs, and energy costs back down uh, to where you know families can afford it. So that's the main reason for this bill and hopefully the Senate will pick it up and uh, or they'll have their alternative and then we'll go to conference to try to work out the differences. Uh, have you reached out to the White House or the White House reached out to you for, for different priorities they wanna see move this year before a presidential election year? So we have not uh, talked to the White House about it. I have spoken a little bit to uh, uh, Secretary Buttigieg about a couple of things that he would uh, would like us to uh, to pick up, and and so we are in conversation uh, with him. But uh, I haven't spoken to the White House now. What is your relationship uh, with uh, Secretary Buttigieg? Uh, Republicans have been critical on a, a number of areas uh, of the secretary. Uh, do you get along with him? Do you think uh, that's a good working relationship for this Congress? Yeah, I get along with Secretary Fine, um, and uh, and he doesn't hesitate to call me uh, if he needs to talk to me about something or an emergency comes up, and and I don't hesitate to call him, and he takes my phone calls. So I'm very pleased with the relationship that I have had with him uh, so far. So I can't complain from that standpoint. As you know, the cleanup from the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, continues. Uh, Secretary Buttigieg did go there. The President Biden has not visited uh, that site yet. Uh, do you think he should? Well, you know, that's up to the president. Um, I think it, it shows very poor uh, response um, when, uh, you know, he doesn't take the opportunity to show up. But then again, the president has never shown up on the border in Texas, or at least he, his, his visit that he finally made, I guess, was a very in and out uh, type of thing. So this is kind of par for the course, you know, for the president. I don't think he's that interested in uh, uh, in visiting, um, you know, some of these crisis areas. But 
uh, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, that's his decision. That's his prerogative. And if he chooses not to, then, uh, I guess that's, uh, that's the way it is. <laughs> as, as a response uh, to, to that crash, and uh, there's been legislation introduced in the Senate, mm -hmm. bipartisan from the Ohio uh, Senator, Senator Vance, and Senator Brown, it would increase penalties, basically, uh, something Republicans have been hesitant to do. And some Republicans have been critical of that bill because it would give the government more power to impose penalties. What do you think of that legislation? Well, I think we ought to wait until the investigation is complete so we know exactly what happened. Um, you know, it's it's frustrating to me when you see people or people are calling for, uh, you know, Congress to have hearings. And I struggle to know what exactly are we going to have a hearing on yet when we don't know exactly what happened. Um, you know, we're also got to pick through the response process and what the EPA's uh, response was uh, as a result. But, um, you know, I like to 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 move pieces of legislation based on data, not on emotion. And unfortunately, right now, um, you know, there's so much emotion attached to that. Uh, and what happens is, is that makes for poor legislation. So uh, I want to see all the facts. What do you think is the future of electrical vehicles and AVs as well? Obviously, Democrats uh, spent a lot of time and had a lot of provisions in legislation in the last Congress uh, on that. Uh, what do you see as the future? And do they do they need, uh, does Congress need to act uh, to, to foster innovation? Um, well, Congress just needs to get out of the way as much as anything else. So, uh, you know, um, autonomous vehicles, whether that's in aviation or on the ground uh, with vehicles, um, there's a there's a huge um, industry out there that is coming uh, very, very quickly. And the problem is that so many times Congress will will stymie that uh, that technology, you know, just just from dragging its feet or not creating uh, the guidelines that we need to at least get the agencies involved. And, and so the agencies can at least produce the rulemaking uh, for some of these, uh, you know, some of these areas. I know in aviation, um, you know, there's there's no uh, you know, there's no bigger issue at stake right now than than uh, AAM, which is uh, which is the uh, you know the new term for um, the air taxis and and uh, you know and, and that sort of thing and and we need to get some guidance, some clearance from you know the FAA and we can't get anybody in many cases to make a decision. We got companies hanging out there waiting for certification so they can start testing and so they can start uh, moving forward and and it's very frustrating from the standpoint of of the agencies and the bureaucrats and, and even on Congress. So um, that's obviously something that, uh, that we need to do a better job of when it comes to, uh, you know, just not holding back, uh, you know, a lot of this new technology. Uh, Speaker Kevin McCarthy says it's a new day as far as government spending and the appropriations process. I know you're an authorizing committee, uh, but at the same time, there's so much, so many people on both sides of the aisle want to move individual bills instead of legislation, which is crazy that no one reads and they just pack it together around Christmas. Uh, are you hopeful that the first step is the House budget? Can you pass a House budget? And do you think the appropriation process is going to be smoother this year? Um, we can pass a House budget and we will pass a House budget. Then uh, the speakers also come to uh, each of each of us who are authorizing committees and, and asked us to look into, um, you know, cutting programs back, um, eliminating duplicative programs, uh, programs that simply are no longer um, no longer in use. And so we're looking we're pouring through the budget right now, at least in transportation. Uh, to try to find areas that we can trim back and, and work on because we do have to get a handle on spending. That's the bottom line. Um, it's out of control and it's going to wreck the economy if we don't uh, if we don't do just that. And it's going to take a long time to to get us back on track. We've got to grow the economy and at the same time cut the spending back. So that's exactly what we're doing. And I think the budget will reflect a lot of that. Chairman Graves, thank you for joining us. You got a big agenda, uh, and appreciate you. We talked a lot about a lot of topics, and uh, good luck this year in pursuing your agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And that brings us to the end of our program. A big thank you to House Transportation Infrastructure Chairman Sam Graves, and to all of you for watching. For those of you who missed any of the conversations this afternoon, we'll be we'll have video up on uh, from this event on our website, thehill.com, shortly. I'm Bob Cusack. Hope you enjoyed this program, and have a great rest of your day.